Hi, welcome to my channel to Irrational. I'm Pranesh Sharma and in this video we'll be talking about how we are going to write questions of hypothesis testing, confidence interval and linear regression in MS Word for our examination CS1 paper A. Let's take an example of confidence interval and hypothesis testing. Now here we have some data given to us. They usually give us summation values. And we are asked first to find the 95% confidence interval for the difference between the mean length of stay for male and the mean length stay for female that is mu1 minus mu2. We are not concentrating too much on the question, just the technique of writing our answers. So for confidence interval, if you are not using uh, equation editor, you can see that I have written the uh, equation here. Okay numerator divided by uh, sorry this would be a x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus we have our uh, z 2.5 and square root of sigma 1 square by n 1 plus sigma 2 square by n 2 i have specified that sigma i have taken as q and mu as m so that i don't have to write mu and sigma every single time now you can see I have not used any kind of calculation in between. I have not shown any kind of calculation. We don't need to. Any type of intermediate calculation you can skip. You just write the formula and write the answer. So here if you are using equation editor, how would it look or how much time would it take? So uh, we will say our first A we will have 95 percent confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 will be equal to now usually it does not take much time to write equation in our equation editor it totally depends on how much practice you have done with it so i would definitely suggest you all to do the practice okay so we'll have x bar 1 minus x bar 2 okay. for plus minus literally write plus and minus it already makes it plus minus z underscore now remember whenever you are writing percentage you should write it in bracket first okay. space then for square root backslash sqrt double space and i'll get a square root and here i'll have Whenever you are using a term again and again, maybe sigma, but I will not be using sigma a lot, at least for this equation. So I am not writing it, I am not copying it, but you can copy any term that you will be using again and again. Now here I forgot to do underscore, uh, you know, 1 and 2. So here I want under root 1. So I can do the correction later on as well. Okay. So and then bracket close space. So this becomes our confidence interval. And then finally write just write the answer. Whenever not necessary, don't use equation editor. Just write your values directly. Okay. Then similarly, especially for such equations where I have written here pooled variance formula. Pooled variance formula. I have numerator, I have so many brackets here as well have so many brackets here. It might be difficult. You can definitely write it like this. But uh, using equation editor, it becomes a little bit easier. I'll say sp square will be equal to. Now here, whenever I have a big fraction in the numerator or in the denominator, big part, I, I always use the fraction from here. Okay, it's easier rather than making so many brackets n underscore 1 minus 1 s one square I think I have made a mistake writing the equation here this should be plus plus now you can do one thing just copy this and then change these ones to twos but i feel that takes more time it's easier for us to just keep
keep on writing upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. So this becomes our sp square and then we'll say it will be equal to 7.4641. Now, especially here, writing this hypothesis part, I have written mu1 is equal to mu2 and mu1 not equal to mu2. So, not equal to, you can use uh, exclamation and equal to, or you can make not equal to using equation editor, okay. So, I'll say, my null hypothesis will be, mu1 equal to mu2 okay. or I will have alternative hypothesis for not equal to either you can take backslash ne or if you don't remember that you have not equal to right here okay it will not take much time to just drag your mouse here and click this so if you don't remember your shortcuts most of the things that we'll be using is given here here okay you will find everything or most of the things here and especially this test statistic also let's say i will write it in uh, equation editor here again i have a big uh, numerator so I'll say x bar 1 minus x bar 2 now in actuality we have minus mu 1 minus mu 2 okay but here I have not written that because anyways mu1 minus mu2 is going to be 0. Okay, but here I can write, here it was becoming a very long equation. So I skipped writing that. Here you can write. Okay, so we'll have sp square root. Now if you see most of the time we are actually writing the same things that we will write without equation editor as well. Just a few backslashes few space bars are what are difficult uh, different it just takes a little bit of practice and if you practice your questions here uh, using equation editor it will be very intuitive you should know what to write in equation editor and what not to write in equation editor i don't want you to waste too much time on writing equation on everything wherever not necessary don't write equation editor okay don't use equation edit for writing your equations so this way we, we can make equations wherever required so combination of both equation editor and not equation editor would always be advisable okay so wherever uh, easy just use equation editor wherever not do not use equation editor okay here it's just simple just write the values okay p value and then you just write your conclusion so you can see i, I have not shown any kind of uh, calculation here also i have not shown any kind of calculation just write the formula write the value here also this is our uh, test statistic this is the test statistic value okay then directly the p-value formula and then write the p-value. You don't have to show any kind of calculations okay, or formulas. And write your conclusion. For later on part also, I have done the same thing. You can see without equation editor, I have written uh, the equations here for F test statistic or you can say the variance test, F test. And here I have used equation editor to show the same thing. Then we have our statistic p value and then the conclusion here. Same thing for the last part. I have written with equation editor, without equation editor, 
the same things. Now let's take a linear regression question into account. Now whenever we talk about linear regression, sometimes they ask us to draw a scatter plot diagram. Now I do not expect the institutes to ask you to draw the scatter plot because they had mentioned they would not ask you any kind of diagrams. But even if they do, or maybe you're doing it for your own practice, how to draw a scatter plot? It is very easy. We go to insert, we go to charts. In charts, we have this XY scatter, and here we can select any of these options for scatter plot. I prefer just the dots. So this is the one. I'll just select and I'll press OK. So it opens the chart and it opens and sort of an Excel file, small Excel file where we will input our values. Okay. Now I'll just drag it down here. And this is the data for which we are going to write our uh, values and X values and Y values. Now pref I prefer to write at least one of those values, X values in ascending order. Now why is that? Because when we make a line scatter plot, then the order matters. Okay, so I'll write these values in ascending order. These are the values, then we'll just write down their corresponding y values. And after you're done with all your values, all you have to do is close the section sheet and you will see you have your chart. Okay, this is our scatter plot diagram. Now you can change the limits of your uh, x axis and y axis. So here you can see that my uh, x axis has is starting from zero and I, you know, keeping a lot of space at the beginning. So I can remove this by first clicking on the x axis. You can see now my x axis has been selected, then right click and go to format axis. Okay. Go to format axis and it will give you options to format your axis here i'll say minimum is let's say 50. Okay. now it seems better okay i can go further let's say minimum is 70. okay now this looks a little bit better then you can change your uh, title let's say i'll write it as scatter plot okay scatter plot and you can write access values to write your access names go to this plus and here just write just click this access titles and it gives you options of access title now you can write your x axis here So this is how we can make a scatter plot diagram. I do not expect them to ask you to make a scatter plot diagram, but they may ask you to interpret one. So we should know how to comment on a scatter plot diagram. Okay. Then when we come to the questions of a linear regression, usually we are trying to hypothesize and figure out whether beta is equal to zero or not, or maybe R is equal to zero or not or maybe find the confidence interval of our uh, response. So usually we are doing the same kind of work as we do in hypothesis testing or confidence interval. Now for the any kind of interim uh, calculation like SXX, SYY, SXY or Q hat square, you do not need to show the formula because anything given in a table book, suppose it is supposedly given in our question. So I do not write any such kind of formulas. Then other than that, we have our hypothesis. Similarly, we can show our uh, hypothesis and um, test statistic using equation editor or without using equation editor. Again, we have our statistic p value. Then we had another uh, plot between residuals and fitted. They had given us values. You can draw it or most likely they won't ask you to draw it. They may ask you to write down your equation, final equation. You can write it without equation editor. You can write with equation editor. It will not make much difference. Then they might ask you predicted value like here. 
they may ask you confidence interval for uh, response as well okay. most of the questions for confidence interval hypothesis testing or linear regression would be very straightforward and you would not have to write a lot of things do not write interim uh, calculations do not write interim formulas just write the main formulas maybe the test statistics and directly write your p values and stuff do like share subscribe and check out other videos on my channel see you in the next one